Well, I think the citizenry of Japan is going to be fairly well prepared for this. The, the, the bigger worry, um, perhaps, um, for the tsunami itself would be the smaller nations around the Western Pacific. Uh, some of them may not be as well prepared as Japan is for a tsunami. And, of course, we're watching very closely. Um, being in Hawaii where we are, we're, we're very concerned with Hawaii, too. So we'll be um, monitoring the situation closely. You know, Hawaii is in a watch right now, not in a warning. Okay, when you say prepared, what kind of preparations can the population make when they've got a six-meter wave coming down on them? Well, in, for, for example, if someone's in Japan, um, they don't have much time because the earthquake um, and tsunami happen very close to them. So all you need to do is just get away from the water. And um, so I'm sure that's what they've been doing. So evacuate the area close to the water. And um, Okay, Brian, anyone... just stay with us for a moment there. We're looking at some live pictures now of a huge wave which is moving along the uh, surface of the sea towards land this wave of course generated by that earthquake that 8.9 magnitude earthquake off the east coast of japan there's that wave moving across towards land and uh, we have brian shiro with us from the tsunami warning center so brian we are seeing a wave right now moving towards land um you were telling us about the preparations that a population can make in the face of this water barreling down Certainly. The, the best preparation is to have a plan ahead of time and to know where you're going to go in the event of a tsunami and to know where the evacuation zones are, where the areas are where you're going to aggregate and collect and, and find your friends and loved ones. And so, um, like I said, Japan is a very good system like this. Hawaii does as well. Um, not every country does, though. So, um, you know, people are going to follow the best uh, plan as they can. Um, but the general rule of thumb is if the tsunami happened close to you and it's going to be arriving soon, then get away from the water. Well, we know that but Japan so uh, is in a very uh, seismically active area. It lies along a fault line along the Pacific Rim, which is very active with uh, earthquakes. So uh, when warned that a tsunami is coming down, barreling down on them, they will be asked to move to higher ground, presumably. Yes, precisely. And, what and, and I, should, I should add to that, too, um, if you're in an area with strong buildings, like high-rises, hotels, condominiums, um, anything made of reinforced concrete, it's perfectly fine just to go upstairs in the building. We, the rule um, that we use here in Hawaii is the third floor or higher, and in that case, you should be safe. Now, we know that this earthquake has come uh, almost 48 hours after another earthquake struck that very same area in Japan, that one uh, measuring around 7.8 that was on Wednesday earlier this week. So we could expect in the next few days more aftershocks. It's possible, yes. Uh, earthquakes tend to uh, happen along the same fault system, um, you know, related to each other, and it can be foreshocks or aftershocks and, and along the same sequence. Typically, aftershocks are not as large as the main shock, so we would not necessarily expect the, you know, the aftershocks to be as big as this, but the problem is with an earthquake this large, the earthquake damage itself has, has certainly caused a lot of problems. And so even a relatively small aftershock could topple buildings, for example, so it is a big hazard. And when we're actually talking about the tsunami, this is a vast area of water that we're talking about, the Pacific Ocean. Uh, with the water level uh, decline and get lower as fur uh, further away from the epicenter of the earthquake? Um, well, the, the tsunami is a series of waves, so it's, it's a number of waves that happen in succession over several hours' time. And a, a wave, uh, as I'm sure you know, it consists of a trough and a crest, so a, a low point and a high point. And so um, depending on where you are in relation to the wave, the high point, the, the crest may reach you, or the low point, the trough may reach you. And um, either way, you'll see either a rise or a fall in sea level. And um, if you're lucky, so lucky to have the trough come first, that's the recession of the sea, that's your natural warning sign that something unusual is happening. It's probably a tsunami. Because I'm looking at the countries that could potentially be affected by the tsunami. It goes all the way up to Russia, Guam, Taiwan, the Philippines, Indonesia, as well as Hawaii itself. So that warning would be for all these countries. Currently, the warning is, is just restricted to the northwestern Pacific countries, including Japan and Russia and the Mariana area and Taiwan. The watch includes the other areas that you indicated, including Hawaii. Um, we define a, a warning as the area within three hours travel time, tsunami travel time, and a watch the area within six hours travel time. And what, it could expand. Yeah, and what we're looking at right now are the waves just hitting the east coast of Japan so far. Yes, that's right, so far.